Hello. Today's stories come from r slash I don't work here, lady. Well, we have four Reddit stories today. I hope you like do's and don'ts lists because today we're sampling two from each. I do and I don't work here, lady. Story one is called Entitled Parent Goes Up Chain of Command to Argue for Free Child Care. As mentioned in another post, my dad is the owner CEO of a group of pharmacies but still chooses to work full time there. I am 10 at the time. This story is about eight years old and a very funny memory. As both my parents were working full time, I would spend a lot of time at the pharmacies before and after school. One particular day, I was sitting on a chair at a desk in the store, just playing with a toy car. Next thing I know, there is a small kid, couldn't be above the age of six next to me, asking for my car. Quite oblivious, having not seen him before, 10-year-old me thought he was one of the pharmacist's children and tried to talk with him. Suddenly, a 40-year-old woman in a dress who is definitely not supposed to be behind the counter is standing next to him, gesturing for me to give him the car. Credit to my dad, he saw her immediately and asked her what her and her child were doing behind the counter. The Karen responds, I saw this child here and decided that mine should play with him, but he isn't giving my child the toy. My dad replies, ma'am, this is my kid and you and your child aren't allowed back here. The Karen starts to turn red. Just because he is your child does not mean that he gets special privileges. I want to see your manager so I can complain about how you are treating my child. My dad smiled to himself and went to the back of the shop and walked back out saying, Hi, I'm the manager. What seems to be the problem? Note that there is a large sign that says what pharmacist is in charge at any given time. The Karen sees this and then says, I'd like to see the pharmacist in charge. My dad smiles again and walks to the back and repeats what he did before. The Karen, visibly shaking at this point, screams, How dare you treat me like this? I know the owner and I will have him fire you. My dad is actually surprised at this comment and says to her, How do you know him? The Karen, thinking she has my dad at the rope, smirks and says, We are family friends and his kids are friends with mine and he would not have a problem with me leaving my kids here. My dad then asks me, have you ever seen this kid before? I reply with a shake of the head, and then my dad points at his name tag and then at a plaque with the owner's names on it, and it dawns on her. The person, who she said her kids were friends with, had his kid right next to hers the whole time. Embarrassed, she grabs her kid and immediately leaves the store, having already received her medication. I love the repeated walks to the back room. Classic move on the part of Opie's dad. Let's jump to the comments where OP makes an appearance in a festival of puns. Krebsky said, he had that plan from the moment he bought that owner plaque. <laughs> OP replied, he told me that he had always wanted to do that. In response to embarrassed, she grabs her kid and immediately leaves the store having already received her medication. Grumpy Snarf says, yes, she did get a taste of her own medicine. Play stupid games, etc. Gestalt Dude said, Forget medication. She needs her glasses checked if she's so short-sighted she couldn't read the sign. Or maybe arrogance blinds one more than love. Story 2 makes the plaque from our first story look almost inadequate. It is titled, My Face on the Building, But Somehow I'm Not the Owner. I love this subreddit. I feel for all of the employees out there, and wow, you've got some doozies. You are all fighting the good fight. I have an IT services business now, serving corporate clients, but several years ago, I also had a small chain of computer repair stores and took consumer walk-ins. I was a pretty active owner and would work the front counter regularly. Because I like to interact with customers, and when I can, I like to try to stay close to what the front line is struggling with, since they understand the business way better than me in some key regards. I also think pretty highly of myself, so I used to plaster my face on all of my advertising which resulted in my ending up as a sort of walking billboard for my business around town. So I'm working the counter at one of my shops, and this fellow I'd never seen before walks in. He brings his computer to the counter and tells me that his computer is not working and that I need to fix it. He was a second language learner, and so you can't always assume someone is trying to be rude if English is not their first language. Sometimes it just sounds that way. So patience is important. And so is not judging someone. I thank him for coming in and explained to him the diagnostic fees we charged and that the diagnostic fee went toward the repair, all the standard stuff. 
and he flies into a rage. He tells me that he had already paid the fee and the computer still wasn't fixed. Oh no, I said. When did you bring it in? He said he couldn't remember, but that it wasn't that long ago. So I looked it up in the computer system and sure enough, there is his customer record complete with the serial number of his system. It had been a full year since he had that computer in. When I explained this to him and that it had been too long by anyone's standards, most new consumer computers only have a one-year factory warranty, and this was not a new computer. He flies into another tirade about what a ripoff we are and how I need to fix this computer because it never worked right after he got it back. I explained it had just been too long, and that sets him off screaming and threatening me. Fortunately, there was a counter between us. So I tell him to get out of my store. I used profanity. It was not my finest hour, but profanity is a strong suit of mine. He won't leave. He says he isn't leaving until I fix his computer for free and says he'll call the police if he has to. I pick up the phone and dial police for him, explaining to the dispatcher I have someone in my shop who threatened me and refuses to leave. So the police show up, and by this time the guy has calmed down a bit and even seems thankful the police had arrived. After a short interview as to my job role in the situation, the responding officer says, Sorry, the owner wants you to leave, so you're going to have to leave. This sets the guy off even more, and he starts screaming. He's not the owner. I know the owner. The owner would never treat me this way. He's not the owner. So the policeman says, This is the owner. I happen to know he's the owner. The guy continues to argue with the officer, but the officer remains calm. Okay, how about we talk about this outside? To my surprise, the guy grabs his computer and goes outside with the officer, still ranting on and on about how I had no authority and the officer had no right to throw him out. And he wants to speak to the owner. I could still see and hear the two of them outside the retail glass doors. As the police officer calmly points to the nine foot tall retail windows on the front of the store, with my photo taking up two thirds of the space and my name and title in about nine inch bold letters under my giant ugly face. So the man goes silent, hacks his computer in his car, hops in and drives away. I never saw him again. I was really thankful one of my clerks didn't have to deal with that guy. But when I messaged them all the story, they all wished they had been there. It never ceases to amaze me that all these Kens and Karens claim to know the owner. It makes you wonder how often they get away with this crap. I know the owner. I'm calling the police. I'm so special. It's gross. Let's head to the comments where some business owners chime in. This is Science said, Something this sub has taught me is some people really think they can get away with a lot. Nam Zombe added, It's what the customer is always right did to people's mindsets. Read War to You said, Too bad greedy corporate types forgot the, quote, in matters of taste. Goofy Al said, I get this with mechanic services. I fix motorcycles and people will try to blame me if their bike won't start after I do the brakes. Or I change the spark plugs, clean the carburetor, and the next riding season they expect me to do the job again, for free. Because it's somehow my fault that the exact thing happened again that they called me for the first time. I usually just fire those customers. Accent Fiend said, I'm pretty sure my coworkers think I'm nuts with how loud I just laughed. I used to work at a bakery that had a woman's name in the title. Think Jane's Bakery. And the amount of times people would try to throw around, I know Jane, do my bidding, now. Jane didn't work there. Jane was, in fact, the owner's only daughter after a series of boys. Opie added, I wonder if this happens at Wendy's. <laughs> Story three is our first of two from I Don't Work Here, Lady. It's short and sweet, but just received an update. It is titled, Fired from Walmart. Plus updates. So the below text was my story from a couple years back. I now have an update to the story. That being said, it was an old account, so I'm reposting the story here with an update at the end. Obligatory on mobile. Sorry about any formatting issues. About a year ago, I worked selling solar panel systems. This job required me to wear khakis and a blue polo when I was meeting customers. One particular day, after meeting with a homeowner, I had to stop by my local Walmart to get more pens and a notepad for my work bag. I pretty consistently got asked if I worked there by other customers and I would help if I knew what they were after, but I always told them that I didn't work there and they were always kind. So this fateful day, I grabbed my pens and paper and checked out in the self-checkout section. As I was leaving, I heard someone say behind me, 
And just where do you think you're going? Now, a little about me. I try to mind my own business as much as possible and don't like to get wrapped up in other people's drama. When I hear outbursts like that in public, I assume it's not because of me. I also try to follow the rules as much as possible. In this case, I assume it wasn't me because I paid for everything. So I continue to my car. Roughly 30 feet from my car, I hear again, Hey, you, stop. I do turn around at that one because that's typically what you say to a thief. An employee who can only be described as a Karen is marching towards me. Eight different kinds of pissed off. She starts reaming into me about how I'm abandoning my shift and I'm not supposed to get off for another three hours. I'm standing there bewildered because I genuinely have no clue what she's talking about. And I try to let her know I don't work there, but she won't let me get a word in. Eventually, she says, forget it, you're fired. I wait about five seconds and told her, I don't work here. I've never worked here. She stared at me and muttered, sorry, and ran back inside. I'm still not sure what happened, but that's my tale of being fired from a job I never worked at. Hope it brought you some joy. The update. I've been banned from that Walmart. The manager in the story apparently has a memory like an elephant. Kind of looks like one too. And is still working there today. I went in to pick up a couple things and return one thing for my wife. I'm waiting in the return aisle and the person in front of me is having some issue with the return. So the employee helping them calls for a manager. It's the same lady, recognized her immediately as it turns out she recognized me, kind of. She points at me and tells me I'm not allowed to shop at this Walmart, and if I don't leave, she'll call the police. Oh my gosh. I asked why I was banned. She said she didn't remember, but she knew I was. So I left. My wife and I have been cackling over this for a couple days and thought you'd find it funny as well. Yes, yes, we did. Thanks for that, OP. I'm pretty sure Crazy Karen banned OP because she was so embarrassed. And what Nimrod put her in a position of authority? Jeez, it's scary. Let's head over to the comments where the Mart of Wall's secrets get spilled. Jordan Gander said, Contact Walmart Corporate and inform them that she is harassing you and banned you because she was embarrassed for harassing a customer. She has no place being a manager for any company acting like that. It's exactly what I said. The Doc J added, if that's how she treats customers, I would lay good money that she treats staff like crap too. I'm sure that they would cheer her departure. Philip J. Fry said, hello, former loss prevention for Walmart here. If they didn't give you paperwork saying you were banned, you are not banned. Walmart can't ban you just by saying you are banned. There is a process that must be followed. Cops must be involved in order for them to legally ban you. Per Walmart loss prevention rules. Most of the time, only people who have been caught stealing get banned. I suggest calling corporate and ask for the market asset protection manager. Complain about this manager. Enclosed Game said, there are only three ways you get fired from Walmart. Steal, don't show up to work, try to unionize. Story four is our last. It's a little odd and a lot funny. It's titled, I don't care what you think about eggs. Another post reminded me of this at the grocery store in regular summer clothes. I'm in the egg section. Man asks me, what eggs are good? Me, I like these ones. Points to slightly more expensive eggs and grab some for myself. Him, what? Five dollars for eggs? You have to be kidding me. Me, you asked what ones are good. I can't believe you can sit here and try to sell me on five dollar eggs. You are telling me you think I need to buy those eggs so you can make more money. I start laughing. Buddy, what the frag you talking about? I am not an egg salesman. He starts yelling. Now you are getting smart with me. You think that is funny? You want me to spend my hard-earned money on these expensive eggs? For what? Bull hog. Why are you yelling? Him still yelling about me trying to scam him. The store overcharging on eggs. You are acting like I have an interest in you buying eggs. I don't. I don't give a single frig if you ever eat another egg again. He says something, implying I work at the store, and then says, you came over and told me I needed these eggs. So I reply, you were right. You need those eggs. You need to buy them right now. Buy the eggs. And I walk away. No kidding. 
minutes later, from a few aisles over, I hear him still ranting about someone at the stores trying to force him to spend $5 on eggs. He was yelling loud. I was crying I was laughing so hard. I hope he tells people his side of the story on how someone tried to force him to buy eggs and he didn't want to. I'm picturing Mr. Wilson from Dennis the Menace here. This guy just sounds like an old grump. Pretty funny story, though. Let's check out the comments where a former grocery store employee shares an anecdote you should not miss. In response to OP saying, You were acting like I have an interest in you buying eggs. I don't. Judge Castle said, Also me when I worked at Orange Hardware Store and people would say things about items. Honest Camel added, You sold eggs at a hardware store? Someone said, They were hard-boiled. Billy Cake said, I worked at a grocery store when I was a teen. I once had a lady ask me why she got a brown potato in a bag of white potatoes. I spent extra money on white potatoes and I don't want a brown one. They were in fact the same price. I gave her the old, I'm sorry, but we do not bag them here. All I can say is perhaps there was a small mix up at the farm. What the heck do you want from me, lady? She says, no, not good enough. I want to know why this happened. I'm not a vegetable detective, so I'm not sure what to say. Then she flips over the bag, as there are mesh screens on the back to see the potatoes. See? There, and there, and there. Lady, you are pointing at potatoes with dirt on them. She literally didn't know they came out of the ground. Oh, how all the employees laughed after this. Captain Punisher said, I mean, I recently bought brown eggs because they were half the price of white eggs. Simple Wish added, I have so many questions. Why aren't all your eggs brown? Here in Australia, even the cheap brands are brown. What is the difference? Chardreg said, There is no difference, just the shell color. White eggs went out of favor years ago due to a marketing campaign that said brown eggs were healthier. This was before advertising standards were as regulated as they are now. The eggshell color depends a lot on the breed of the hen laying them. If you've enjoyed the story and would like to hear more, consider liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment. Thanks, and bye for now. Da, da, da.